welcome to another SY Diagnostics video and in today's video we've got a 2016 Ford Focus 1.5 diesel that's in a non-start condition as you can see from the vehicle it's in a bit of a sorry state I think it's been stood quite a while so without further ado let's start looking it's been a while since I put a video out as some of you may know I left the Ford dealership in August 2022 it's now June 2023 I've been doing a different job and unfortunately not been able to put any videos out. Uh, I've done a couple of little jobs that have not been really, really worth videoing, but I think this one may, may make a good video. So let's have a look at it and let's see if it's worthy of the video. As always, I like to try and prove the fault to start with. Um, sun's very, very bright today, so I'm hoping that it's not going to affect the footage. So we're currently sat inside the car. Um, I'm at another garage, I'm filming on location, so I'll put my foot on the clutch and we'll put the ignition on. So we've got engine service now light come on, uh, we do have an engine management light on, um, that's a good sign. We've also got the ABS light, traction control light is on, the steering lock has come off also a good sign so I've got the foot fully on the clutch and I'm pressing the start stop button and we've got absolutely nothing just press the steering wheel so we've got immobiliser malfunction service required steering assist malfunction service required active city stop not available washer fluid level low bonnet open that's obvious because it is driver's door open because it is okay and also we've got no uh, recordings there of the trip computer they're all got dashes on them right so let's see if we can plug the computer in put four scan on it and let's see if we can get any direction So as always, my go-to tool is Forescan. So we've got it plugged into the vehicle. The ignition is switched on and we're attempting to make communication now with the vehicle. Straight away, we can see that it won't recognize it. So it's trying to fetch up the uh, older vehicles that I've used before. Uh, there's a sign there, unable to connect to the vehicle. So that is telling me straight away that we've got a communication issue and we need to look a little bit further into this problem. So we plug four scan in and we've got no communication, um, which I did have a suspicion that that would be the case. So now I'm under the engine bay, uh, I've got the lid off the fuse box. Um, so let's have a look at the wiring diagram. What I'm going to do. Okay, so we've plugged in four scan and we've got no communication whatsoever with the vehicle. And as I've previously mentioned, four scan or any dealer tool or dealer level tool requires communication with the PCM. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to go through the whole wiring diagram and the process that I followed where I came to a logical diagnosis and a fix. And I'll be honest, it was all done within about 15 minutes. At the moment, there's a lot of talk on some of the forum sites regarding process. Um, so I'm going to let you guys discuss this hopefully was this process or was this my system knowledge or is it a combination of both so here's a diagram of the uh, PCM powers grounds and can lines here you can see the PCM itself and we've got three power supplies there going into the PCM fed by fuse 32 in the battery junction box which is the fuse box next to the battery in the engine bay. And fuse 32 in turn is supplied its power via the PCM power relay. Also, we have got there the ISPR input. Now I'll be truthful, I'm not sure what that stands for. I take it as being ignition supply power relay and it is fed from fuse 38. Uh, it does state at the top there that it's hot in start and run. However, a little bit later on, we'll see that it is supplied by the ignition relay. 
So straight away we've got two fuses we can look at there in the battery junction box. We've got fuse 32 and 38. We've also got powers, sorry, we've also got grounds and the can lines on the PCM, but the PCM isn't the easiest of items to access. So for the moment, we're not going to go down that route. We've also got a PCM wake-up signal, which comes from the body control module. So it in turn requires that the body control module is powered up, which looking later on as well, has a power source coming from the ignition relay. There is the ignition relay, also in the battery junction box, and on its primary side, it is fed its ground via the body control module. So there's a couple of items there we can look into. Once the relay is uh, activated and the contacts closed, then we have power going towards fuse 19 of the uh, battery junction box, which is a five amp fuse. And also there, the little blue hyperlinks denote that there are extra pages to look at. So there will be extra fuses. So we've also there got fuse 19 that we can check. Incidentally as well, the ignition relay, it's number three and number one. So number three is secondary and number one is a primary feed. They're fed from fuse 23 and fuse 12 in the battery junction box, which also incidentally are the power supplies for one and three of the PCM relay. So moving on to there, we've got two more fuses we can look at, five in total at the moment. So here's another page um, showing the ignition relay and the feed there once the relay is triggered going off to separate pages and the power distribution line is K. So let's follow line K, which is there, uh, going into the battery junction box and we have got fuse 19, which was on the previous diagram, going to the ABS system. And we've also got fuse 44 and some other fuses, no doubt on power line P. Um, and as you can remember from the previous um, videos and slides that we did have other faults coming up on the dashboard. If I remember right, we had steering issues, ABS lights, traction control lights, rear wipers not working. So for the moment, I'm not looking or that um, concerned that we've got a PCM issue. I'm thinking more towards a supply issue, a control issue. So then we've got another fuse there, fuse 44, we can look at. So on the next page now, we're looking on power track P, and we can see there we've got a whole bunch of other fuses and um, powering up other items. Some the vehicle may not have, but we can see that we've got the rear wiper motor, we've got a body control module, uh, we've got power steering control module, but obviously that's just for Russia, uh, by Xenon headlights as well. So again, some more fuses there, and I've only taken the fuses that I'm really concerned with, which will be the body control module and the rear wiper motor and the rear wiper motor relay. So going back to the first page, we had the ISPR um, feed, which was fed from fuse 38 in the battery junction box. Going to the PCM, incidentally as well, it's uh, not actually shown on this diagram as being the 1.5 turbo diesel. It seems to be every other engine variant regardless of it being the 1.5. The initial picture did show that fuse 38 was fed from the uh, ignition relay. And we can see we've already got fuse 38 that we can check. So this is the battery junction box. We've got the power control module relay there which is relay 14. We've also got the ignition relay Relay 16. I think personally this is the route I am going to take. Okay, so we've got a row of fuses there, rows uh, fuses 32 to 36. I'm going to concentrate on checking those and also fuses 37 to 41. I'm going to concentrate on checking those as well, as well as removing the ignition relay and checking the primary and secondary feeds. So let's go back to the video. What I'm going to do, I'm going to concentrate on this relay here, which 
is the ignition relay uh, and it should power up this row of fuses and also uh, some fuses down on the bottom here for various systems including the ABS, the power steering which if you remember right we've got the uh, warning lights for them and there is also a fuse in there for the ignition feed for the engine control unit uh, Four scan like the Ford dealer tool has to communicate with the engine control unit to uh, have any communication with the whole vehicle at all this fuse here has been changed that's not a, a genuine fuse it's also should be a 15 amp fuse as well and this relay if I move a little bit closer you may hear that there is when I pull it out ignition is on at the moment when I put it in there should be a faint click and there's nothing so let's have Okay, so we've looked at the wiring diagram and we know now that these fuses and this fuse row should be powered by the uh, ignition relay here. So I've got my test light. If I just put it onto the battery, you can see it lights up. So we go to this one. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So that row is completely dead. And likewise with this row all completely dead as well so what I'll do I'll just take this relay out um, I should have a permanent live on two of the pins which we have one there that's on the secondary side and that's on the primary side the secondary um, side of the relay is powered via the body control module obviously that and that feed uh, I need to look at the wiring diagram but I think they come off um, not sure if they come off the same fuse but we'll have a look and obviously this one then is the output so what I'm quickly going to do I'm just going to jump uh, pins what are they pins three and five of the relay the secondary side uh, bypass the primary side of the relay, the feeds, and see if we can get any uh, communication established with the PCM. Right, so I've just got a little jumper wire made up here. Should really be a fused jumper wire, but I've got limited tools here. So I'll put that into three and five and see if we get any... Right, I could hear some clicks then and the fuel pump spark into life. So let's jump on to um, Forescan now, let's see if we've got any communication. What I've basically done here is um, bypassed relay 16, the ignition relay. For those wanting to know, I'll show that on the wiring diagram now for you. So here we can see the wiring diagram and here is the ignition relay with pins 3 and 5. And all I've done is jumped pins three and five to create a bypass link. With relay 16 bypassed, uh, we've fetched the ignition on. So straight away I plug in four scan and we've got communication with the vehicle. I just select the manual gearbox so that's what it is. And now it's going to go through a system test. Uh, straight away we can see communication with the PCM and some fault codes in there along with fault codes in other modules as well, which for the moment I'm not too concerned with. So let's let it uh, finish its sweep. There you can see a lot of fault codes there in the BCM. And it's just continuing to the end. Faults there in the HVAC, in the uh, front control interface module, the FCIM, also the IPC. Let's just save the profile. So let's go into the DTCs now. So in the engine, we've got fuel rail system pressure too low. Um, we've got brake booster pressure sensor circuit and ECM PCM power relay de-energized too early. That is a fault that I've induced by bypassing the relay. The rest of the fault codes for the moment, I'm not really too concerned with. So now we've come to the end of the fault codes there. So what I'm quickly going to do now is erase the fault codes. So we erase them there. Am I sure? Yes, I am. 
So I'm going to cycle the ignition off and then back on again. And it's just returned a couple of fault codes there in the BCM for left low beam, right low beam and ignition control. Again, two headlight faults which I'm not too concerned with. And the ignition control is because I've got the bypass in the, uh, for the relay. Um, well, we're back in the car now. I bypassed the ignition relay and we got communication with Forescan. Loads of fault codes in there, which most of them have erased with the relay bypass. The only ones that come back, if I remember right, are headlight faults. So what we'll do now, let's put the ignition back on. So what we've got on the dashboard now um, as you can see, we've got no warnings from the ABS or the traction control. Um, if I scroll through the displays on the dashboard, we've now got the trip computer back. So foot on the clutch, start her up and she runs. So what I need to test now is the feed from the body control module up to the ignition relay. Um, anybody familiar with Ford, maybe knowing where we're heading with this one but um, presumption is the mother of all um, cock-ups I'll not swear on the camera um, so yeah so let's get access to the body control module pull off the relevant multi-plug and uh, give it a check and we'll check the wire between the body control module and the ground for the ignition relay relay 16 in the engine junction box Right, so we're in the passenger footwell on the left hand side of the vehicle going underneath um, the glove box area hoping that you can actually see what I can see so here's the body control module this item here this is the multi-plug we need to be on anybody notice the mistake straight away that this plug latch isn't latched Surely it's not going to be this simple. So let's just plug that in. Doesn't feel like a very good uh, connection. But stranger things have happened. Let's best just take it out to start with, make sure there's no water damage from the uh, washer pump, which is a common fault. I do have a video on that one. So that seems okay. Plug it back in. Snack it into place. I don't like that plug. I think over time, the vibrations, that will work loose again. So anyway, what I'll do, I'll just switch the video off now. Go and plug that relay back in. Well, actually, just to prove that I'm not cheating. Oops. So here's the relay, we'll plug it back in. Sorry for the background noise there. Just move my phone and the car keys. Okay, so ignition's on. Lights have gone out and it starts off the button. Well, wasn't that a simple fix? Uh, but I think what we need to do is address that multi-plug because it will come loose. Okay, a bit of a confession to make here, guys. Uh, I'd like to think that throughout my career I've uh, been rather professional. I always like to do the right repair. I don't like doing any podges. But it's a needs-must situation with this and the little I'll show you on a different multi-plug because this one's also broken. A little barb that pops out that keeps the latch in position. And what's happened on the inner or the left-hand side barb on this multi-plug up here, it's really slack and broken off. Um, I tried gluing it back on and packing it out a little bit with a cable tie, but it won't stay in position. So what I've had to do, not proud of it. It is a I'll class it as a temporary fix, but we all know where it's going. So it's held in position now with a couple of cable ties. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to pop out with vibrations. 
or going through any um, potholes or going off road or anything like that I mean I don't know who owns this car so what we'll do now just to verify the fix and make sure it starts up and we'll go through one force scan once more and see if there's any fault codes that are permanent uh, and yeah we'll take it from there So we're back onto Forescan once more. Again, look at where we left off. So let's just um, read the fault codes again. We've got a low pressure one in there because I had to pull the relay out, the bypass out to turn the engine off. So that's an induced fault code. So let's erase the fault codes, cycle ignition off and on again, and let's see what comes back, if any. So we've got a clean sweep there at every module with no fault codes in it at all. So what I'm just going to do now, I'm just going to go onto some live data. I'm going to put up the engine, con sorry, the engine speed revolutions per minute, just to prove that the engine is running. And then I shall erase the fault codes after it's been run and see if anything comes back. So I've just started the engine up there. It's idling at around about 750 to 800 RPM. And I'm now just going to reread the fault codes and there is no fault codes come back. So we're back in the driver's seat. I shall put my foot to the floor with the clutch pedal and she starts up. No warning lights on the dashboard. Airbag light will go out, there it goes. Just the handbrake warning light on. Passenger door open, then it'll be driver's door open. Trip computer all works. And as you can see, she revs up fine, and I can switch her off, back on again, and she starts, and we'll call it a fix.